about four years ago, I started having, I didn't know it at the time that it was neuropathy. So we tried treating it with Parkinson's drugs, gabapentin, and the neurologist I was seeing didn't want to continue to prescribe it. And so he referred me over here to Dr. Gordon's office. And they were like, oh, have you considered this? And they gave me the paperwork for the um, neurostimulators. Spinal cord stimulators can be advantageous for a lot of patients. Um, primarily for nerve pain patients, uh, either after a surgery or after an injury who have persistent chronic pain, uh, where our non-invasive procedures have failed to alleviate uh, their pain or improve their quality of life. I've had pain off and on for probably the last 10 years, but when I went back to work, it really started setting in because of the wear and tear in my shoulder. It was just normal wear and tear. I hadn't done anything at work to, to injure it more. My career and my journey was everything to me. I was always a very active person. About six years ago, I started getting some pain in my lower back. Finally, we found out that I have Ehlers-Stano Syndrome. About six years ago, I had my first spinal surgery. And even after that surgery, I went from being very active to not active at all. The uses for spinal cord stimulation are growing. We're finding more and more patients and pathologies that we can use this technology for. So this could range from anything from chronic shoulder pain um, to back or neck pain after a surgery to complex regional pain syndrome after a crush injury to an extremity. So if you're wondering if spinal cord stimulation may be able to help you, my suggestion would be to be evaluated by one of our physicians. When I started back at work in 2016, I noticed the pain, um, went to one shoulder doctor. After the third surgery, I started trying to find a pain management doctor because I also have fibromyalgia. And when I came in, I was seeing Dr. Kolowitz at first. He did a couple nerve blocks, um, and then we, it turned out that that, was, that worked out well. So we found out that I'd be a good candidate that way and since my surgery, I've had about 85 to 90% pain and relief in my shoulder. So the process itself uh, is a two-part process. We always start with a trial. So a trial is completely temporary and reversible. It requires no incisions. You get two temporary uh, stimulator leaves that you get to go home with, with an external battery taped to your back. So you get to test out the device at home for up to a week and let us know how it works for you. If you get greater than 50% pain reduction, then you technically are a candidate for the permanent implant. As of today, we're seeing much higher rates of success than that. Back in July, they did a trial uh, thing where they implanted with the battery pack and the leads about where they would go and we were able to target exactly the spots that I was having pain. And I had some some nights of some pain relief and so that was, that was kind of our, like, yeah, this will work. Of those people that we're bringing to a trial, 90% of patients are going on to get the permanent device. So the trial procedure itself takes anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes on average, and the permanent implant can take up to an hour, hour and a half, or two hours depending on your anatomy. Both those procedures are outpatient procedures with little to no recovery afterwards. The trial, we want you to be up and, and moving about the next day. After the permanent therapy, there will be a, some incisional achiness and soreness for the first two weeks, followed by up to six weeks till you're fully recovered. I've had it now for two or three months now, so, so oh, enough time to, to play around with it. So would you do it again? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Totally worth it. After having it done and going through the recovery, which didn't last as long as I thought it would, I found that I wasn't waking up every morning in excruciating pain. I started going for walks. I'm able to go back and do everything that I wasn't able to do before. It really helped with my depression that I was able to go back and do things that I wanted to again. But I'm able to hang out with my kids, do things with my kids again, and just have a good time. So spinal cord stimulators have been around for a long time upwards of 30 to 40 years at this point. Uh, the older technology has changed 
much over the past few decades. We're able to cover more types of pain and for longer periods of time with less burden on the patient. The spinal cord stimulators that we're using today have battery lives of up to 10 years, require no recharging during that time, and can be controlled with an iPod in the palm of your hand. With it being an iPod, you know, people might think it's just a phone or something and a text message or whatever, and people don't notice it. If I'm out and about having dinner at a restaurant and I'm sitting in a booth that's hard and starts hurting, you know, I can just pull it out and within a few seconds, you know, I can just turn it up just a little bit while I need it. The thing that has remained unchanged during this time is that the stimulator is an electroceutical therapy. So it's an alternative to all of our pharmaceuticals that we typically think of when we think of pain management. So it does not involve any medications, does not involve any refills or any of the side effects that are typically associated with medication use or even our injection use. That electroceutical stimulation is blocking the pain signals that travel through the nerves in the spinal cord. This is, this is very important because it's going to the center uh, and the source of the pain rather than treating the pain peripherally or trying to mask it with systemic medications. My husband got his spine stimulator. He was having pain in his lower back and sciatic pain. So I wasn't sure if it would work for me the same way it worked for him. So there are some common uh, misconceptions with this procedure. The, the first and probably the most common that I see is that this is compared to a TENS unit. TENS units are transcutaneous or muscular stimulators that do not go down to the deep nerves. Comparing a TENS unit to a spinal cord stimulator would be like comparing go-karts to a NASA spaceship. This is a very advanced piece of technology with the possibility of getting long-term on the order of decades of therapy. Um, another common misconception is that this is a, a very invasive or a procedure that will uh, lay people up in bed for, for weeks to months afterwards, and that is not the case. The whole point and purpose of doing the spinal cord stimulator is to get you up and functioning, so there's minimal downtime. We're looking at, like I said before, maybe two weeks of uh, achiness and soreness from the battery or pocket site, and within six to 12 weeks after the procedure, once we've fine-tuned the device, our goal is to get you functioning at a much higher level than before, and hopefully on less medications. And it's kind of like been the final piece to you know coping skills and pain management uh, medications, and and now it's like I think so much more clearly. I'm awake all the time. I have more resources to cope with stress. I am so much more productive. Yeah, it's it's been amazing.